Oh, well, thank you, first of all, to every single one of you to taking the time to join us tonight. My name is Oscar Peña. I am a um, co-founder of Return Panama with my buddy, my brother and I'm next to me, Rod. Um, and I originally am from Cali, Colombia. Been here in Boquete, Panama, pretty much the whole time in Boquete, 15 years. Been left Colombia in 2006, and I was living before in Costa Rica for about three years and a half, working in a hotel in the hospitality industry. Uh, been uh, working in tourism and hospitality industry ever since. Um, and I do basically the guiding part when we do our week tour and some other services that we provide on the side, like uh, helping you to find a, a reliable secondhand vehicle and just to many times to remove any red tape to make life easier. Um, so I've been working for many years and uh, have a good um, synergy with the community. So I consider myself like the bridge between Panamanians and you folks. They're coming from different areas of North America. I'm very happy with this job. My best health is not here, our, our logistics operations manager. Uh, so we're going to see how we do it tonight. Yes. Yes. We can do it. <laughs> well, last time you weren't here, Megan and I did, but yeah. we, we, we had a fake picture of you. We didn't, yeah. I didn't, wasn't able to find one of Megan so that we could do that. So, but anyways, I do apologize for the light. It's kind of weird tonight, but this here is our backup lighting system in case we lose power. I'm going to have to change that for the next one. Um, I look like I'm slouching because I'm in a big comfortable office chair and Oscar is kind of in a lawn chair thing. So, but anyhow, my name is Rod Larrabee. I have been in Panama 12 and a half years now. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Um, I moved here in my mid forties, looking for something different, looking, you know, being a Canadian, looking to beat the tax system. But, you know, I, I made some mistakes in the beginning, big ones. And I met Oscar on my third month here. He he was already helping expats move to Panama. That's 12 and a half years ago, folks. And um, he saved my butt, saved my bacon, as, as Canadians would say. And um, hang on, we got to let the dog in. There we go. <laughs> and from that point on, like it wasn't, it was just months after we became business partners we opened up a little business right here in Bocchetti with um, the next year, which was tours and stuff. But what we kept finding is people walking in the door, new expats, lost, not knowing what their next step was. They jumped on a plane and they moved to Panama, like something like I did. So we started doing more and more um, expat relocation tours. Like Oscar did his first private expat relocation tour what year was that? 2011? Yeah, 2011, yeah. 2012. That's yeah. pretty much mm -hmm. since I've been doing this. So we've been doing this a long time. So together now, we like him and I have about a combined experience of almost 25 years of helping expats move here. And we're going to share that knowledge with you tonight through your questions. Now, you can ask anything you want. And I'm going to say this again because a whole bunch of people have joined us since we started talking. So they missed Oscar. Oh, well. And but don't put your questions in the chat. We might not get to them. There's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Just touch your screen. You'll see it. Put your questions in there and we're going to answer them. We got questions. People have emailed me for tonight. And also, most important, we want to meet some of you. So if you click the raise your hand thing, you're going to come on and through your microphone, you'll be able to talk to us and ask your questions. So those of you who want to do that, please do that now. And we're going to start with people who want to meet us. And, you know, you're going to get to meet them too and see what other type of people and start pounding those questions in the chat. And you're going to ask virtually anything. Like, really, if we don't know the answer, and that's quite possible, we're going to take down your name, which we know it here, and I'll make sure I have your email, and we will get you the answer. So I am going to promote a couple of people here. You're the first two that raised your hand to panelists. Now, what you have to do is accept the um, share your mic and accept the, uh, we hope you'll accept a share your camera and then you'll be on screen with us any second. 
There we go. We got Terry. So Terry, you have to unmute yourself. And if you'd like to share your camera, we would appreciate that. And we'll see who we are. All right. Let me. Uh... Oh, one, one second, Terry. Okay. My own little tech side. I need some volume. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm looking for where to share my camera. Oh, right down beside the microphone. Uh, are you on a computer? Yes. Yes. So if you hover in the bottom right left, you will see the microphone and the camera. Just click on it. Click on the camera. There we there go. Oh, hey, Terry, right. how are you? How are you? Great. Um, uh, I watched uh, your uh last live Q and A. Mm -hmm. and found it very uh, uh, very helpful. And when I watched it, I, I took some notes, and I have uh, just a few questions. Sure. Uh, well, one is that really lingers in my mind is uh, this is about retiring in Panama. And when I think of retiring someplace, I think of staying there. Mm -hmm. uh, yet from the January Q&A, uh, it indicated that when you turn 75, uh, your health benefits essentially go away as a permanent resident. Uh, no, no. Um, 75 is the maximum enrollment age. So if you've enrolled before you're 75, you're good for the rest of your life, whether you live to 90, 100, 150. It's the maximum enrollment age international companies will take on new clients. Okay, so if uh, if I end up moving there, I would be 75 by that time. Are you not moving here for 10 years? Because you look much younger. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So if you can get here before you're 75, these are international plans, okay? Um, are you from the U.S. or Canada? Yes, I'm from uh, Washington, D.C. You're from the U.S., so you can keep your Medicare, you can keep your Part B there. There are other options that are more of a copay plan, like they pay 70% and you pay 30 Those are available for people over 75 based on a doctor's visit, doctor's interview, as long as you don't have, and well, if you have anything major, they're just going to exclude it. Like, so, let's say you had a major heart surgery last year, they're probably going to exclude the heart. Okay. Uh, but you're saying that uh, Medicare would apply there? No, would like if you had to go back for something, let's, I, I hate talking to people I like to put it in a third person uh, that let's say somebody moved here other than you or us and they, you know, 10 years or, and they were 75 when they were 78, they were diagnosed with cancer. You could go home for treatment if you kept your part B and your Medicare. Right. Uh, which I you would. didn't have any insurance. Here. Right. Now, but it, or if you couldn't afford the 30% copay. These are only for people that are over 75 years once they get here, folks. If okay. you're under 75, you can enroll in any of the um, international health plans, and you will still get it after you're 75. So you can enroll in international health plans. Well, it, it, it'll, be a local, it'll be a local health plan. It'll be a local health plan. Yes. Yeah, like a, some type of the, the more basic plan that will cover a, a a hospitals yeah. in, the, in the area. Cover specific hospitals, maximum $50,000 benefit a year. Uh, I know that sounds silly, but there's very few procedures here that will cost you a lot more than that. Yeah. Especially on your 30% copay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a, um, a hip surgery or a, <clears throat> something like a, so like a replacement of knee is no more than... 10 grand. Yeah, knee, knee surgery is like 12. Hip surgery is the bigger one, but it's, uh, yeah, it's about 12, 12 to yeah, 12 to 15, mm -hmm. like like in that range. So Medicare is a lot more affordable. And if you had if you only had to pay 30% of that, you know, you know, it's not bad. Right. I, if if uh 
I'm thinking more of emergency situations. If I had to have knee surgery, I would come back here for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, but, uh, but, but you know, let's, you know, I mean, let's just say I, I had an emergency, uh, right. emergency, and I'd have to have surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, what are my options? Uh, it, uh, uh, it to if you're over that. 75, the plan I'm talking about, it's called Family Medical Care. It's underwritten by Pan Pacific American Life. So it's a good plan. And it's available. There's hospitals in Panama City, Coronado, and David that would do that work for you. And you would pay 30% of the hosp hospital bill. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um and uh, I'm interested and in with them and get the brochure. I I am just putting our contact in the chat. Okay. You can just request that. All right. And we um there's a brochure with the with the people's contact name. We don't sell health insurance, like we're not about that. But there, there's a brochure with a great contact on there that can help you look at that plan. If you're under 75, I you know, when you get here, I highly recommend you try to get in on one of the international plans. They are much more expensive. The one I'm talking about is going to be about 150 to 175 a month. All right. Can you enroll in an international plan while you're in the US? No. You need okay. to be in the process of residency here. Okay. In the international plan. Okay. Yeah. Um, but thank you. That, that, that's no for the answers. Uh, just very briefly, uh, the drought, and I heard you talk about that uh, last month. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's still ongoing, and it is affecting uh, traffic through the canal. Yeah. Uh, and I have two concerns. One is that's a major uh, source of revenue for the country. Uh, so if this uh, continues, and it appears to be, from what I've been reading, it appears to be related to climate change, uh, not necessarily an El Nino uh, off and on, but I, you know, I, I I don't know for sure, but if this uh, if this continues, um, I, I'm concerned about the the effect on the economy uh, well, in, yeah. in the whole country, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, and what. Um, I'll just leave it at that. What, well, what the, the majority of people that are writing these op-eds all over the internet have not been here. Oscar and I have already seen three El Nino years, and this happens every single time. And I believe, yeah, it's obviously re related to El Nino and to the climate change. And there has been a board, they've set up a scenario that they're working on this and how to solve it. And But this is the issue, what, what has happened, Terry. Uh, the El Nino started, obviously, in April and May last year. It's predicted to be over in April of this year. And by August, the shipping containers were already bidding 30% higher than last year for um, transits. And we're not at 50%. We were at 50% for two days, yet that's the headline all over the internet. Today, we were at 28. We're normally at 38 a day. We've been between 24 and 28 every day. You can go Google Panama Canal Transit. There's a live thing happening there that shows you how many transits a day. So okay. we're down about 30 to 40 percent. But, okay. uh, but the fees to go through are up 30 to 40 percent. So it's not a huge issue. The new canal, the one that does the Panamax ship that bring in the million dollars per crossing, they aren't even effective because that was designed with recycled water. And that is what this task force is now working on. How do we, like the, the canal works like a toilet. Gatan Lake fills up the, um, the, uh, the, which is fresh water, fills up the locks and then flushes it into the oceans where the new locks recycle the water. So they're working on, you know, it's probably a 10 year project and a couple billion dollars, but, you know, they've done it before. And I can see them because of, of the climate change thing. And we don't want this happening too often. Yeah. 
you know, what, what saved us this year, of course, is the other canal in the Middle East. People can't get through through there either, so there really is. So there's a real big, you know. I guess less water is better than people shooting at you. Uh, so the yeah. ships are yeah. getting higher to come through here. <laughs> yeah, and then it's very prosperous. All the all the operations in the Panama Canal they has been reduced, but like a, I go every single month, and it's always ships passing. Yeah, we're through. there every month. And, and the canal, the, the lake doesn't look low. What they're doing is not because of dry out; they're just preventional reduce the the traffic of the ships. Mm -hmm. But if you if you're there in person, the water is not the level is not down. It's the same level. They just want to be cautious about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think it, 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 now they work less and make more money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, every, every time it goes cheaper, I don't they want to through a yeah. new uh, expansion. It's a million dollars a big ship. And some, uh, we are uh, right now in the canal. I read, uh, this is reading local mm -hmm. media for me. I have to translate it that the canal is like, been, is higher book than it ever has been because the, Mostly the Asian companies are pre-booking six months, a year in advance at, and bidding to get there, uh, get through the canal. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, one uh, quick question, and then uh, I'll stop dominating things. I, I know other people want to talk. Uh, I, I've been researching this. I haven't been able to get good information. Uh, I'm. Uh, we're interested in Panama City and uh, Coronado, uh, so more urban uh, areas. Uh, what is the mix there of uh, conservatives and uh, liberals coming from the U.S. and Canada? Is it pretty much uh, re it's, it's no different reflective than of, of, of what we have now? I'm, I'm particularly concerned about the U.S. Yeah, it's really no different than your country. It's like half of the people are Republicans, half Democrats, but okay. it's not... But what they, seems to happen here, they don't talk about it this much. We're like yeah. in our groups, how do you handle that, Oscar? Uh, I just give a free vacation of politics. Yeah, it's a it's a week. You come in our group, you get one week's free political vacation. Yeah, Nobody because talks about it or okay, side of the road. Because we we <laughs> wanted to focus, you know, like there is uh, it's Panama. There is yeah. nothing that what happens in the political spectrum in North America, either US or Canada, that has nothing to do with the politics in Panama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And somehow, not directly, and somehow I'm sure there is, but and people here they just they just come here and join. And okay. Okay. many I have seen many friends that are opposite opposite poles and they end up having beers and sometimes they just you you know what? Let's let's just live. Okay. <laughs> Simple All right. as that. Uh, thank you. I'll yield uh, to uh, others now. Thanks for your time. Okay, oh, great. You. If I can get you to turn off your mic and camera. So I'll we'll do that. Move on to, I uh, believe, Quinn was next. The Hamilton. I know the names Glenn. of the people with the hands up are different. I'm sorry, what's your name? Glenn. Glenn. Okay, yes. Glenn. I actually have two questions, so I'll start off and I'll do it very quickly. First of all, hi, Rod. Hi, Oscar. Uh, you have a great website. Very, very resourceful. Um, my first question is, uh, obviously, I have pension income, um, so I will be subject to withholding. I'm Canadian, obviously. Um, I will be subject to withholding Part 8 tax, and I understand that. If I stay in Canada, if my cash stays in Canada and earns interest or earns dividends, whatever, my portfolio, um, I will also be um, subject to Part A tax withholding on dividends and interest. Can I park that money in a bank in the Cayman Islands? And will that money flow to Panama to me tax free? Or is it earned in Panama and therefore taxable? Here's the simple um, answer Panama's territorial tax system and will charge you income tax on money you earn on Panamanian sources. Okay. That's exact that's a direct translation from a Panama government website. Okay. Meaning that here, here's an example. Uh Oscar and I put on a tour. We put the tour happens here. So even though the money comes from the US. We, we, we have to buy the goods here, provide the services. Yes, that's all taxable. But okay. let's say somebody hires Oscar to for an hour of his time 
to talk about Panama. And he does it from his house over his phone and sends them an invoice through PayPal. That's it. That's not Panamanian source income because he's selling to a U.S. person. A Canadian, like myself here, I understand my pensions when I finally get, get them one year will be withholding of 25% because I'm a non-resident. Right. But money I make in the stock market, as long as it's not Panamanian stocks. Like if I own Copa Airline, I have to do a separate filing because that's a that's Panamanian source income. So money I, I, I make on my investments which are all handled throughout the U.S. and Canada, are not taxed in Panama. But are they taxed leaving Canada? Say you in your portfolio receive a dividend, right? Yes. Are they taking 25% off of that? Well, that no. No, the, the, the 25% withholding tax is only what the government can do, mm-hmm. okay? So on your government sources. So those mm-hmm. are pensions, RSPs, like anything the government can touch. Now, if oh, you okay. work for, we, we, we've had some Canadians that are getting private pensions, right? Well, Me? they, yeah, yeah. Well, they talk, they, they first file for their non, their Canadian non-residency. Then they get the paperback saying they're a non-residency. They provide that to the administrator and they have their money sent somewhere else. Typically a U.S. bank account or even all the way to Panama. Okay. And it's not taxed by Panama because it's not Panamanian income. Okay, that was my first question. My second question is, I've I've been doing a little research on the real estate um, just right across the the country of Panama, and I'm really, really confused about um, pricing. Um, They're, they're, you know, one kind of style house, three bedroom, three bath, can range from, you know, 200,000 to two and a half million. Is it location? And I'm talking like even even in a region like Boquete or, um, you know, uh, Costa del Este, um, the prices like are really out there. Is, is there a, is there a way to find out what houses are actually selling for or, uh, or combo? You know that that's very that's very different because everything there is a market and a location is definitely one of the reasons why a property can be higher priced than other location the how old is the house uh the size the lot and that's one of the factors but sometimes i mean sometimes the prices are too high and sometimes they they just the offer sometimes it's just like let's say a house that is um, asking 450 well sometimes they will go down to 380 you never okay. know okay never know. so like here in panama you can always offer and it's no problem with that. What you find in Panama, you have a lot of expats with a lot of money. Yeah. And like a lot of them have sold a million dollar home in the States, bought here and came here, bought something for 300000 decide I don't like Panama. So they leave and they list it for four fifty. dollars I think they're going to get it. Mm-hmm. So that's how you get a huge variance. Mm-hmm. How you find out, yes, Panama has an MLS, but there's no, the reporting requirements are still weak. So for the individual... There's no way to tell the history of that house in Panama. Okay. Very simple. You just have to monitor, come back next month. If it's still there, it's probably overpriced. Mm-hmm. Right. The average time on market in Panama is over a year, and that's what's giving you that huge range right now. Perfect. So, okay. There Excellent. Thank you. Have- Thank you very, very much. No problem. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks. Okay. So we have... Let's let me clean up the thing here. Who is next? We have um, your name on your email is T Haika. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, it's me. Hey, how yeah, are you? How are you? It's um, Te Ahika. It's um, it actually means in Maori the home fire of burning. Oh, okay. So, um, okay. Te Ahika. I'm Carol from New Zealand. Hi, nice to meet you, Carol. Go ahead, tell us a question. Okay, so um, I'm very much, I, put, I fell in love with Panama and uh, wanted to come down right from um, Houston, travel through Mexico and all Guatemala and uh, Costa Rica. 
coming down into Panama and of course I did want to cross into Colombia for a little while as well, but I um, believe that I can't do that at this time. Um, but my trip has been delayed to anyway, so I'm wanting to move over in July, August. And um, I, I am on my own, so I'm just wondering um, about safety, not so much for me, I think my whole family is wondering about me being crazy and uh, my safety um, going through these countries. So I guess the question is for, for them uh, um, that are listening um, to me, uh, you know, how safe is it? Where do you live? Woman, I'm yeah, where do you live right I'm now? In New, in New Zealand. New Zealand. Okay, safety. Mm -hmm. Well, the safety in Panama is extremely higher than many other countries in Central and South America. I'm, you know, I, I'm born and raised in Cali, Colombia in the 80s and the 90s. That was different times. <laughs> so, but yeah. here, here, um, Boquete per se, Panama, the country, I'm not going to say that they, any country don't have the ghetto areas and some areas they only, you know, this common sense that you don't go by yourself in some, some time of the day, uh, um, and especially by yourself. But Panama, I mean, the rates of crime here are very low. Yes, we have some as as a little like a, uh, what do we call it? Somebody, if you let the door open and you're showing the stuff like that, or you're not paying attention for your purse and you're in a BC area, it's just like very, very silly, silly like robbery. But that, that happens only when you are out and about in some area, you're not watching for yourself. And that's that's not a common thing here in Panama, you know. It's those those kind of situations can happen anywhere, at least in this continent. Um, but Panama for safety for uh, for single woman is is a very safe country. We have many single gals here that live comfortably by themselves, um, just with the normal precautions like you know lock your doors. Uh, don't invite anybody, every single person you know to your house because you need to know who is who. Um, just very basic uh, safety measurements and everything is fine here. Um, then we have some uh, some bad areas, for instance, uh, from Panama City to Colón. They're working on it, but but there's still uh, some areas that you know you notice when you when you're driving by. They oh yeah, this is not an area I should be by by myself. At nighttime, you know, mm -hmm. but Panama is is a is a where in the what number? What is the rate of Panama right now? Well, if you look at nationmaster.com, which is a stat that all the police departments around the world and law enforcement report to, Panama is safer than the USA and Canada. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know where New Zealand is on that list. I had it in front of me. There's like 150 countries. It'll take me yeah, too long. To find. But check it yourself, nationmaster.com, and go to the crime sections. Yeah. Now, the other thing I can highly recommend of you that would make your family feel better, come with us on one of our weekly yeah. tours. We next next week we have five single ladies on, on on out of 12. We only have 12 people on the tour. Five single ladies are on this tour. We take them from Panama City to Boquete over seven days, and we really deal with a lot of that fear your family has and telling them, this is a great area. We'll take you to places in Panama City. You can walk the streets. You can go out at night. But, of course, it, it's a city. You want to? You don't want to do that alone, okay? Like, like we teach our people how, how to do that and, and what are the best areas in Panama for a single person like yourself to retire. Yeah, and as I, you know, we get to see different areas in the country, how, how safe it is. And the only thing you have to watch out is don't get hit, hit by a car or don't twist your ankle by no we're looking the sidewalks. That's pretty much the most danger the whole time we're on, on tour. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. How would I, to open a bank account, would I wait until I got there to do that? And you can be in the process of residency to open a bank account. Mm -hmm. So you just okay, can't. Um, and I know you. some people might say, yes, you can. Legally, you cannot. The governor of banking in 
Panama requires you, you to be a residential Oscar and I follow the rules. We don't go by hey, what some other lawyers might might tell you. But there's no need to set one up until you start that process anyways. Okay. Um, what is the retirement age then for the uh, I'm sorry? Like the retirement age? There's it's no age. Fun. You're receiving a pension. You can apply for the pension at visa whether you're 30 years old or 90 years old, there's no age. You have to be receiving some type of a pension that's worth more than 1,000 US dollars a month to qualify for that visa. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and my third question is, Yep, no, no, it was, um, that was it actually. Very nice to have spoken with you and um, I will actually do one of your tours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come yeah. here, give us a chance to yeah. uh, show you the country. Yeah, I just put the link in the chat, which explains the different tours that we have. Mm -hmm. And they're very popular with singles. Like, yeah. we, like uh, on our next tour, we have three couples. No, wait. Yeah, three couples and six singles. One guy and five girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes we have the other way around, but we we have very common to have a single single ladies coming in or to work, okay. and they have already I... relocated here. Sorry, I do have one more query, and that is: Am I able to get up to the Hawaii Islands for a tour? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, uh, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, I'm a counselor, but, um, um, you know, in, in mental health, I guess, it would come under that umbrella. Um, so am I able to start a, a business there? And, yeah, what type uh, of a business? It, it'll be in mental health, counseling. Um, all health professions are protected professions here. Um, and you, you do have to realize one thing. Um, 90 five percent of the population here is spanish only yeah. only spanish yeah mm -hmm. about five percent of the population is fluent in english mm -hmm. that includes us expats so it might not be a market it might be better to start one an online business in that profession which you and service people who are outside of panama which is no it no 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 problem I actually know several people in the site like like working in the psychology field so mm -hmm. or even within panama it's just with uh, yeah. the, the target will be also expects they they're seeking for that type of service in yeah. uh, online or even in person if you to have English speaking. You know, a lot of people don't realize that Panama is a small country. It's only 4 million people. I know New Zealand's not huge either, but out of those 4 million people, only, you know, 200,000 of them speak English. So, you know, you know, if you don't speak Spanish, that's a challenge. But you can't open up a anything in the health business with a placard, like with, a, with an office and a, and a name on your door because those are protected professions in Panama. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Well, thank so you so much for joining us. We have one more guest that is waiting to speak and then we're moving directly to the questions in the chat which are piling up. And so we... The uh, sorry, I I can't read your email. Uh, Alex said they weren't up there. What's that? This is, we already talked. We going. Oh, we did already. Okay, we're this moving one. to the chat. No, this one. Yeah, yeah. Just give me a second there, Oscar. Mm -hmm. This is what usually Megan does. Did you see what's happening right now? Shut up. No, just kidding. We're not fighting. Okay. Okay, we're gonna move to the chat. We're gonna take a little break, guys. Yeah, these people. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Don't worry about your raising hand, folks. We're going to get back to you. I've seen some questions in the chat. Remember, guys, those of you that have posted questions in the chat, please repost them in the q and I, I saw a couple of them. Uh, I'm going to 
put Oscar on this one right away because we get this all the time, folks. Mm -hmm. Not just a question. We see people doing this themselves and getting ripped off. The question is, how do I purchase a car without being ripped off? I currently live in Panama. Well, this time, if you don't have knowledge for uh, mechanics, because here in Panama, we don't have any car facts. There's no way you can tell about mm -hmm. the history of that car. Unless it's a car, they have all the records from the owner. But even though you have to make sure if you have a mechanical, a reliable mechanical, it has, is neutral from, and not known from the seller, and it's someone that actually has outstanding reputation. Or you can hire um, somebody like me, to do the inspection, test the car. I have knowledge in, in mechanics since I, that's what I was to do when I grew up in a mechanic garage with my mom and dad. So I do have some life experience on that. And um, also know the process. You need to make sure there is, there is um, some people in Panama are, there is cars that have been stolen and resold, resell. So we have to be very careful with that. I mean, also who you buy the car from. So the best way is to hire somebody. If you don't have all the knowledge to hire somebody like me, or you can hire me. If you're looking for a car specifically right now, you can tell me also what kind of car you're looking for because I have two cars for sale right now. Mm -hmm. They're all check and pristine conditions. So let me know. So what do you do? Like you actually go to, that, why, why do you go all the way to Panama City? Well, I would go to the Panama City because in Panama City, is the area has more inventory of vehicles. Mm -hmm. But also, Better it deal. has the most tricky part because a lot of cars, sometimes people are not as honest and the car might be involved in a flooded and have, might be involved in a bad car accident and might have exploded the airbags and might be stolen, stuff like that. And if you don't know the, the buyer and, and there is a little bit of issues right now with the used car. So... I am very thorough when I go to look for a car and I do the test drive, I do the very detailed inspection um, and make sure that the car is good to go. And I do it personally. Okay, I just put the link in the chat, the Panama Expat Service Vehicle Purchase Service. It's it's so worth it, especially your first time. Yeah. Because Oscar will deliver your vehicle wherever you are in the country with all the paperwork already done. Mm -hmm. You might have to wait for a plate if it was new or there was a transfer, but with everything done, you can learn, you know, it's kind of funny. I've been here. We've been friends 12 years. Oscar did mine for the first eight years. I made him do my paperwork. I, said, do I, do <laughs> I now do my own. He made no, it. Oh, he graduated. He got he got it. Go. He eight bought, years. And he bought his course. Of he'll deliver to Gorgona. Yeah. Anywhere in Panama will do, do, will yeah. deliver. If it's around lunchtime, you got to make him lunch, though, before he travels <laughs> the rest of the trip. Yeah, people do that, guys. Okay, let's hit questions. We got more. I we, We'll try not to miss any tonight. Okay, RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Um, Cadwell, I hope that, yeah, I'm sure that's your first name. Cadwell McDonald. Yes, it's the fingerprint thing. But by the way, if your lawyer is not giving you the exact instructions on what to do with the RCMP and what you what what, what piece of paper needs what stamp and, and where does it have to go, then hopefully you haven't paid them any money yet and get a lawyer that does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go to our website, fill out our forms on immigration. We'll connect you personally to the absolutely best immigration service in this country. And because I see all the time people posting on social media on how to get their paperwork. That's a lawyer's job. Yeah. We are not lawyers. And but all I know, yes, it is the thing you got to get fingerprints done. Yeah, but if the lawyer is telling you to do that, to, but doesn't have the answer, the straight answer, you need to get another lawyer. Okay, that is not a lawyer. Pension adult visa estimate for one person. You're looking at two to twenty five hundred dollars, which includes a multiple entry stamp and everything, uh, the translations, um, um, other stamps needed, like like everything. That is the full price. That does not include the e-cedula. The e-cedula is another step after you get your personal, uh, your um, um, permanent visa. And the e-cedula is about 150 if you do it yourself and about 400 if you do it with a lawyer. 
if you do it yourself, you're going to still going to want to hire a translator to bring with you. And, you know, it's, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. You do it with a lawyer, you show up with them, boom, you're done, you leave. So. Okay. Somebody in the question put tax question, please. Please ask your tax question in the Q&A. Can you ask military veterans? There's so many levels. You know, the number one thing I tell um, U.S. vets is talk to your VA person. Um, and they, they'll have a list of countries. Like I know people with, um, what's it called? Um, TRICARE for Life have full access to medical service in Panama City. I know there's a VA pharmacies in Panama City and David. But your first step is to talk to your VA representative because they have the list of countries they have services in and where they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we have reported this to clean, but that's included a risk for procession of 41 in 1976. Okay, that is a interesting because that means your FBI report is not clean. Does does not include. Okay, well, no, that's fine. Yeah. You know, they go only by your FBI report. Yeah, they're they only by FBI report, yeah. They're not, the immigration here is not going to phone somebody and say, hey, do you have an arrest? Um, you, you know, uh, data for this person. If it's not on the report, you will be fine. Yep. You're clean. Now, like guys, things on the report that matter, this one would have um, been an issue. Yeah. Um, anything sure. serious felonies are an issue. Mm -hmm. Drunken and driving, the DUI is not, because the DUI, a DUI it falls in the classification of parking tickets here. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's not a crime. So um, a lot of people are worried they have DUIs on their records. They won't be able to move to Panama. You will. And there's the question, Oscar, right? You just answered about TRICARE. If you have TRICARE for life, yes, you'll have full access. There's a hospital, a, I think it's, um, what's the one right downtown? Hospital, not hospital, Panama. David? No, Panama City. Panama City, Paitilla? No, no, right downtown, close, closer to the hotel. Downtown. Huh, uh, oh, I can't remember that. Yeah. I can't remember. Um, but yes, try careful life. And again, every time I've given an answer, you know, we've been somewhat right, but I can't tell you the name of the hospital. Your VA rep will know it. They'll bring up Panama and they'll say, you can go here, here, here. Oscar, talk about public health care system in Panama. You went through it with your baby, too. I did, but public public health care system, it can be a lottery sometimes. It depends where you are and what is the situation you are in. It's very inexpensive, pretty much almost free uh, in many degrees. Like my, my son finished when he was born, he was premature, and he stays, his mom was for like five five days in the hospital and then after he was born was another five days for 24 hours in an incubator my total bill was 150 dollars they still ask me if they want to do payment <laughs> today it's actually free any labor is free in the public system but in the public system you know the you're sharing the room with another 24 people and the visits are very short and that's just in the situation um it is very inexpensive, but the timing is almost like a situation you have to, if you want to have an appointment with a, with a specialist, you have to go like at five in the morning, do a line outside the, the clinic just to get an appointment. The appointment might cost you only 50 cents, but that's, but you have to do that. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a give and take. Yeah. If you're okay with that, you have all the time and patience. Most important is patience. Then you can use public system. But it's still not for some of the things I will not say to hold on that. Uh, better to do on the private. If you'll be shocked about how the prices even the private hospitals here in Panama are compared to like, the United States. Oh. Like you can do a, a knee replacement for under 10K. That's going to be like a 45, 50 under grand? 10K. Under yes. 10K, yeah. 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 And that's 45 yeah. grand, yeah. 50 grand in the States. 
So, but in the public hospital system, you can have it done for probably thousand fifteen hundred bucks, but you're gonna have to wait two. And you a have half to years. wait two and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so but, it's almost like a, like a situation that Canadians have. You know, my right? buddy, I I keep telling the story because there are <clears> people <throat> when I at the uh, publishing company, the guy that helped me with my electrical. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. Yeah, and anyways, he had a major hernia, a rupture. He had no insurance, so he gets rushed to the public hospital. They take him in, and they there you get quick care because you know the guy is you know falling apart, bleeding inside. They did the surgery. They kept them there for three nights. He tells me he, he remembers waking up in a dorm with like twenty other guys. Yep, most of them moaning, complaining, and he had just had major surgery. He asked for painkillers, and they gave him ibuprofen. Now, on his checkout, as they wheel him in the wheelchair, he couldn't walk yet, but they were going to throw him out because they needed the bed. They, he, his bill was $185, uh, three days of hospital care and a major surgery, guys. $185 with the option to pay in monthly installments over a year. Imagine that. So, yeah, you can use the public hospital system. But it's, yeah. Yeah. It can be, it can be, I mean, it, it can life save your life, but you got to be very understanding and why will take also to pay that little or oh no pay? Okay, I got a I got a great question by Terry. I don't know why mm -hmm. it's showing me emails and not names. Huh. Why is it? But I know the email. This is Terry. Okay. Hey Terry, I understand correctly that you must physically be in Panama for six months a year for international medical plan. You are a hundred percent correct. About five to seven years to go. People were getting were young people in their forties that were paying eight hundred to fifteen hundred a month for insurance for for a couple were flying to Panama, getting the friendly nations visa for five grand, and getting uh, medical coverage for one hundred and fifty bucks international, and flying back home and and visiting Panama for a vacation once a year. So they had to stop that. So now you have to live in Panama for the international plan. For the local, nope, doesn't matter, but you have to continue paying your bills. There's You, you can get a suspension for up to two months, but after that, you got to go through the whole medical process again if you're over 50. So there's no limit. Like if you were, so some people do that. Uh, you, you just got to be careful that they don't dump you one year because if you're going to live here six months a year, and you're going to go with one of the local plans, which are like 125, 150 a month for someone in their 60s. And then you go home for the summer, then you have an incident, and you come back, you might not qualify for your medical plan. So you got to be careful then. Okay. Hi, Ron. Is there a medical certification required for residency? <laughs> yes, there is. There is. You go into a doctor's office. And the receptionist takes your name and then takes your $15 and gives you a piece of paper. Yep. That's about it. There is, what would disqualify you for residency? Um, leprosy. Yeah. Huh? Leprosy. I'm thinking it's, something that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for medical, yeah. Yeah, it's Otherwise. a contagious thing that you walked into yeah. an office. No, it's basically, honestly, if a doctor does see you, he's going to take your pulse and ask you a few questions and give you your certificate. Cost fifteen dollars usually too. Yeah. So there's nothing that you know, you know really disqualifies you, and the less to say, the better. Always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the purchase where we went through that one, the car purchase. Yeah, we did that one. Megan would actually be answering these and deleting them for me, but I'm not doing that. We're just scrolling down. Do most condo buildings have fire control systems, including water sprinklers and individual yep. units? Yep. The, well, new, the new ones. The new ones. The new ones. If it's if it's older than 20 years, probably not. Well, actually, yeah, depending on the building. Yeah. But in the Panama City mainly. See, Panama has gone modern in mm -hmm. the last 10 years. As far as wheelchair accessibility and fire protection systems and stuff but um they haven't grandfathered like they basically grandfathered everything in mm -hmm. like i've seen beautiful top end restaurants with wheelchair rats lead, leading up to a 20 inch door of a bathroom because they they don't have to of uh, they they didn't make them go back and fix them same as they're not making buildings retrofit 
for fire protection, but the new stuff does. But here's the thing I've noticed in Panama, nothing burns. Like no. there's very few residential fires. All construction, 98% of construction, you think I'm right, is concrete and steel. Yeah, the yeah. only fires they have seen recently was been in Panama fire. City, but it was for pure negligence of the of the, the residents. Yeah. But there's yeah, no been, wooden structures. No. There's yeah. definitely no low-rise three-story wooden buildings that catch on fire and burn 18 units down within three hours, like we see in North America. Yeah. Constantly. Everything's concrete and steel here. Do pensions include SSA, Social Security Administration? Yes, absolutely. That's the number one pension is Social Security in the U.S. Number one in Canada is Canada pension in combination with um, old age pension. Old age pension. Internet. Okay. Guys, For I moved here not knowing Oscar. I moved here as an internet marketer and I picked Panama based on its reliable high-speed internet. And it has only got better. And every year, the price, the internet has gotten faster with the lower price. Today, I'm just upgrading my internet. I didn't tell you yet. I'm going to get 500 meg. Today, I have 30, uh, 300 megabytes for $39. Um, and there's a free upgrade to 500 megabytes for $39. Now, this is fiber, obviously. Fiber is available from Panama City to Volcan, as long as they're on, on or near a major highway. We are also one of the three Latin American countries, including Colombia and Chile, that were introduced to Starlink a year mm -hmm. ago. So even if you're in the middle of nowhere, you can get 200 meg internet for 52 bucks a month. So internet is not a challenge. Your biggest challenge is the power. You guys were on the call last month and... Um, Five minutes before the call, the internet went down. And but I, because if you work online, if you ask an app because you work online, my backup internet is a thirty dollar backup option. So yeah, for business wise, I do pay sixty some, but at least I have a full backup, and that backup also has a battery backup. So no matter what happens, I typically have internet unless. You know, it's the end of end of the world situation, but <laughs> oh, no, no trouble. <laughs> okay. okay, we're gonna answer a couple more because they keep coming. What is the pension handle visa? Explain that one, Oscar. Pension handle visa means that you are on a pension, and that is the easiest and the most affordable uh, type of visa to be resident in Panama. And the pension has to be either a social security pension or um and it's any source of income that I have to be over twelve hundred dollars a month. Yeah, like a private thing. Like a private pension. It's a thousand a month for a single, twelve fifty for a double. Mm -hmm. well, let's answer both these questions at the same time. Mm -hmm. You cannot get the pension adult visa without a pension. Mm -hmm. There are other visas you can look at if yeah. you don't have a pension. The pension must be for life. Yeah, it doesn't have to be social security. It can be fire department, police. The uh, flower shop you worked at for 40 years what you can get is without the visa or pensionado visa or being retired and as a pensionado is some discounts yeah like raw he gets discounts all the time i, I do not why. i don't i'm not old enough to get my discounts yet <laughs> megan where are you <laughs> make so, up. so sometimes they just assume oh you're you're retired so they just I give discounts for the medicine and stuff like that he loves it. I get discounts for medicine because I have a health insurance. <laughs> okay. But yeah, and the pension adult visa offers you about 25 different discounts in your life. Everything from 25% off airfare, 15% off drugs, uh, well, the medical kind, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 50% off your movies and, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. So most, so, some of the discounts, we we sometimes, like for instance, for uh, some, there was a debate in some groups and Facebook groups and uh, the restaurants. I I work in restaurants in the past and I know sometimes it's very tight and that that discount they're giving to you, that's pretty much the profit. Yeah. And it's if you're going to a phone that like the the discounts were done for very elderly Panamanians, they actually cannot afford some of them three meals for five bucks each one. Yeah. So to go to a phone that to a local restaurant and get get the pension out. I will I will say that was later be for the for the very older Panamanians, but yeah. take advantage of the um airlines 
travel agent. I take it at McDonald's when they offer it to me. McDonald's. <laughs> For some reason, people think I'm over sixty, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Brian, like an earlier question mm -hmm. at Starlink. Yes, Brian, you did not hear that wrong. It's fifty-two dollars oh. a month. For the same plan that you're paying 157 Canadian for, and in the US they're paying 119 now. In Panama, it's fifty-two dollars for the exact same plan for Starlink. That's shocking. Starlink high speed. Okay. Next question. Then we're gonna to get to the people that have your hand up. Anyone else want to put their hand up? We'll do another quick session with live people. There's one Oscar. Are the Highlands area, Boketti, for example, car dependent? Or are there buses for getting around? Boquete, you can be perfectly fine with our vehicle. It's about your lifestyle. And it's about how independent and lifestyle you want to have. If you're the type of person that wanted to be outside the town and in some areas in the mountains, you probably will would appreciate to have a vehicle to have independence. We do have a public uh, transportation service in town, uh, but sometimes they, they just, there is no a schedule per se. They know there's going to be every hour in some areas in the rural area of Boquete, small, small minivans. And the big bus that goes from Boquete to David is every hour. Early morning is usually every 30 minutes from downtown, from the town center. Um, it is feasible. I always say the, the vehicle, like in Boquete, if you're living in downtown area, you're probably fine with our, uh, with our car. But again, it comes down to like what kind of lifestyle you want to have. And if you're in other areas of the highlands, like more remote, definitely, I would highly suggest to have a car. Perfect. Okay, we have, I'm going to venture to say Alex, but I don't know by the emails, guys. For some reason, Zoom tonight is not showing us the name you entered as your first name. <laughs> and it's only giving us emails and phone numbers. But there, can you unmute yourself? Uh, good evening. There you are. How are you? If anyone else wants to raise your hand and get in queue for questions, please do. Go ahead, Alex. How can we help you? Um, okay. Um, I'm uh, reading about uh, uh, Panama and what's going on uh, for a, quite a while and a lot of questions, uh, answers I kind of know. Uh, but um, I heard um not just one, but several times that uh, some banks just closing accounts, clients' it's accounts. 25 years we've been here. We have banks at multiple banks. Not only have not one of our hundreds or thousands of guests had that happen, it hasn't happened to us. Yet I've heard rumors of somebody saying it's happened. Yes, they'll close your account. If you don't use it for three months, but you don't lose your money, you walk back in and reopen your account. There is a requirement to have activity on your account in Panama every three months. You're not going to lose your money. They just close access to your account. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, and to reactivate uh, what you have to do. And which? In case it's closed, like a uh, lot. Oh, you just uh, go lock. back in and they're going to sit you down. They're going to ask you for more paperwork. Most of the paperwork requiring to open accounts and keep them active and for the watching the money that goes through has nothing to do with Panama. It has to do with U.S. laws on money laundering and allowing Panama to be part of the SWIFT transfer system. They have to abide by those laws. I have known someone that had their account closed because they ignored several emails from the bank over a series of time. Those emails will always come in Spanish. This is a Spanish country. It is your responsibility to look at those emails, translate them, because if you're doing transactions in excess of $10,000, the bank's required to keep on file where that money come from and what was it for. Mm-hmm. So yes, your account can be closed. And the people, and I know some of the people on Facebook and other places that have had their accounts closed, and I know why. Because they didn't listen. They did not comply with the regulations of the bank they agreed to when they signed up. And they didn't okay. lose their money. Okay. They, they just closed their account. 
We said, hey, okay. here it is. Go somewhere else. So a, re a requirement uh, is uh, to make some transactions, at least one or two or... One transaction yeah. every three months is most banks. I know a couple of them are six months. That can be an ATM transaction. That can be transfer money from your checking to your savings, any type of transaction. You can do it through your online banking. You don't have to be here. Uh huh. Okay. And another question uh, regarding of transferring a uh, large amount of money, mm -hmm. that, for example, for FNV visa. Now you, you have to put two hundred uh, two hundred k. Yeah. So that kind of thing. So that should be arranged with bank prior or a hundred percent. You will, if you're going to transfer $200,000 to Panama from the U.S., you need, for whatever, let's say you're doing friendly nations visa, you would need a letter from your lawyer, which they'll quickly write up, that they're, uh, uh, and your bank's going to know because you're opening the CD with them. Or if you're buying real estate, you would send the offer to purchase. You would just give a copy of the offer to purchase to your bank. This wire is arriving tomorrow. Great. They file that piece of paper in some basement in Panama City, of a bank, and no one ever sees it again. It's a requirement of, not a Panama, it's a requirement of U.S. money laundering or world money laundering laws that anything over $10,000 has to have paper background to it. Mm -hmm. or, or they can request to see the paper background. Okay, thank you very much. Very simple, so welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. hey, um, did I get the name right with Alex? Alexander, yeah. Alexander, wonderful. It's great to see you. Hope to see you in Panama sometime. Uh, hope so. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's get back to, oh my goodness, Oscar, we're going to be here till midnight. Uh, <laughs> oh, Richard. Okay, look, the names came back. Yeah. Richard, in general, what is the moving process? Well, I can stop right there and answer that. There is no general moving process. No. Everyone is different. When our guests, I can give you an example. When our guests decide to move here, Oscar, Megan, and me get on a Zoom with them. If we're all here, if one of them's gone, it'll be just be two of us. We build them a checklist because everyone is so different. And the fact that it's so different, there's so many things. You got to start, you want to start with the immigration paper because you don't want to come here without important Papers. Yeah. yeah. What else? Uh, check about like what are the, the appliances you might want to bring. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. What you want to bring in specific. Stuff. If you have a special vehicle, something that you really love, like we have some clients that they, they brought the vehicle, but that vehicle, yeah. I mean, was I'm special. glad it's special. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad they brought it. I'm hoping that I can drive that car soon. <laughs> but yeah, in that situation, so appliances, if you're if you like to cook, maybe some utensils, maybe uh, knives. I don't know stuff. Yeah. Stuff that you do you know that you use a lot. You will probably will miss. It will. You need to have that conversation with your U.S. or Panama Bank. Mm -hmm. Sorry, U.S. or Canadian Bank or European Bank. If you're on that tour, I'm going to tell you the conversation you have to have because um, I've we had people come down here mm -hmm. and they've lost access to the bank accounts. They've literally had to flown back to the States to fix it. Yeah. Um, and you, you don't want that to happen. Yeah. And I can tell you why. You need to know how you're going to handle your phones. How many of you guys use your phones? You go log into your banking on your computer and it sends you a code via text. Well, is that going to work in Panama? No. You need to figure that out. They're, they're, like the check is, is big. And that's what we do. Yeah, like like that is the main purpose. Our, our our main purpose is well, number one, so you find a spot within Panama that you love and you've fallen in love with, and you're going to check it out. But our second main purpose is, when it comes to time for you to move, we're going to do that checklist for you, and we're going to make sure you do it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll try to help you in the process when you move here. That's part of our, that's part of our, our goal in our business. Exactly. We have everything. Like it, it's extreme, guys. Once we get to, we just finished a group, and I had special requests 
from financing and banking. These people over the next week are being set up for some of the best tax advisors and money advisors that there are between Panama and the U.S. and Canada. Those are, you know, those are important things that you need to do. Like, what are you, you know, you, you Canadians, let me say one thing. I, I have a Royal Bank account. If you have a R, RBC brokerage, you're not going to be doing any business in Panama. And you want to talk to us about that and how to fix that? Well, you're going to have to get in contact with us because obviously that's not a one-on-one -on -one thing we can talk in a Q&A. No. But uh, yeah, we have the solution for that. Mm -hmm. And we've had, I noticed in the chat, there was a bunch of stuff. I deleted a bunch of it because uh, it was wrong information. But anonymous attendee, it's a funny name. Mm -hmm. Since when do we allow anonymous attendees in? Okay. Um, about banks, the best bank to use to spend less on bank fees in the banks. Number one, um, to use an ATM, whatever people tell you, and every Facebook group tells you something different, it's not. It's all the same. The difference is many banks haven't updated their screens to what your receipt actually says. It costs you $6.50 to withdraw $250 if you're using a U.S. card in Panama. Mm -hmm. All the banks, all the machines are owned by the same company. The same, yeah. They're not owned by the bank. The bank can't help you. You lose your card in the machine, you go to the bank, they can't help you. They, yeah. they don't have access to the machines. If you have a bank uh, account in Panama and you use the ATM from that same bank account, that's there we go. then it's free. And you take five go, bucks. And if you go to another ATM, you can withdraw like uh, up to $1,000. Every five hundred dollars at once, and you only pay one dollar fifty for yeah. the transaction. Mm -hmm. If it's from other bank ATM, but that's it. Yeah, this question I think is mostly on the international. Mm -hmm. So on the ATM, you're going to get charged six fifty here for a two hundred fifty dollar withdrawal, and your bank at home will charge you whatever. Mm -hmm. I have multiple people keep telling me that Charles Schwab will refund your fees, charge or this co company will refund your fees. Yes, if you have a special account, a high net worth account from these banks, they will refund your international fees forever. If you have a regular account, they will refund your fees until they figure out that you are no longer living in the U.S. Because read your TOS, guys. Read the terms of service. The refunding of fees for most accounts mm -hmm. in um, Charles Schwab <clears throat> is for U.S. residents traveling abroad. Not for U.S. residents living abroad. So if you're spending five months a year here, yes, you're going to get away from away from. Them. If you're here permanently, I know many people after two, three years, they get the letter from Charles Schwab. We are no longer refunding your fees because apparently you no longer live in the U.S. Now let's go to wire transfers. The cheapest I know of in Panama, and I have looked at about fifteen different Panama banks. There's only twenty five is multi-bank at $30 to receive a wire. Bank called General is $35. Uh, other ones are $42. 42 like, 46 they're, they're all over the place. Plus, there's going to be an, an additional $20 intermediate fund if you don't do it right, like intermediate fee, plus your fee from home. In general, my number's always been to send a wire from the U.S. or Canada to Panama. It's 100 bucks. Now, you can reduce that to about 35 if you use an intermediate service like WISE, WISE.com. <clears throat> and if you have ways to get money to WISE that doesn't cost anything, which most of you do. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I, I keep going back to what we offer our guests. Uh, I, I have a meeting with one of our guests tomorrow. It's a Zoom. I'm helping him set up his WISE and reducing his transfer fees from $100 to $35 a month. So I'm going to save this guy six, what's six times 12, $720 a year in transferring money that he does every month. And I, I, it's very detailed, but like it takes time to do that. I'm going to write an article to help you people that, you know, go to a site all that time. Did we miss one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, is there any danger for... Have you seen any protesters outside today, Oscar? Uh, what danger is there now about protests? There has been no protests. Uh, there's always will be protests in any, for any reason. Uh, 
riots. We don't have riots. Uh, there are only some side situations. Some uh, sensationalist Facebook groups, uh, they just spray sometimes fear and terror without need, technically. What happened last year on, on, on November, um, that was pretty much one of the worst things we haven't seen, me personally, in the 15 years of being here. Protests, they are never going to end. Now, that kind of protest for what happened in the minority, probably we're not going to see that in, in a, in a, for a long time. Uh, we have elections, uh, presidential elections on May 5th. Uh, many people were actually spreading the word and then the fear that people to not come to Panama and to cancel everything until February, up, all the way up to February. And we're also um, telling people that the, the, the roads will be closed until elections. And yeah. every of that was 100% pure false information. Um, so we're not having any issues right now. Sometimes very sporadic as, uh, protests, like the other day in David outside a group of retirees, police were kind of like protesting because now some citizens, they, they just wanted to protest if they don't have the water, if they don't have electricity for, for a day, but usually that happens for an hour, maybe, maybe, maybe more than that. But that's it. That's not, not a big issue right now. And for the safety of Canadians, that's nothing to be concerned about. It. Panamanians do not hate Canadians. And it's it's not about uh, against the, the citizens of Canada. It was mainly the government who fraudulent saw a law, a law signed a law that was unconstitutional. It was approved by the Supreme Court of Panama in November 28th. So there you go. Mm -hmm. So there are no protests. No protests. Can, can Canada now does a parcel. Yes, they do. Uh, I, I I still don't advise that for immigration, though. Um, Panama immigration has been doing, using um, um, consulate authentication for many, many years. They just like it better. Most lawyers use consulate authentication. It just works good. Uh, must my documents be... No, the translation happens here in Panama. It does not happen... The, your your counselor your you can't get a Spanish document a apostle in Canada I, I I doubt if you could uh maybe French and English yes mm -hmm. there seems to be conflicting information as to translation yeah the any translation happens here in Panama uh once you send all the uh, that's why a lot of lawyers say you'll see it read online uh, you can get a pension handle for fifteen hundred dollars it doesn't include any of the extra costs. It doesn't include translations, stamps, um, multiple visa entries. It does, you know, once that stuff all adds up, you're paying certainly more than 1500 bucks. So the translations happen here. Canada is now part of the Apostle. Can I, I use the Apostle in Canada for bringing dogs here. I haven't. We haven't used it in because the lawyer we use is has a great relationship with the Toronto Consulate, and they turn around their documents in one day. So that's why we don't use the apostles. Mm -hmm. Okay, we asked, answered. <coughs> what is me, Glenn? And you answered it live. Perfect. Uh, question about banking. Yeah, we answered you. We're getting near the end, guys, which is good because we're running out of time. Okay. First of all, would you recommend renting before buying, Oscar? You've been here longer. You're going to answer that one. Yeah, it's always good. But you rent first, especially if you're looking uh what it will be the area uh in the country. You have to make sure if you like the neighborhood you like, if you for potential you're looking for a condo, rent first, especially if it's in a condo, you want to know how is the HOA, you want to know the neighbor, you want to know the rules of the administration. So it's always wise to rent first. Mm -hmm. Always wise. Unless is a still offer something that you know you're gonna flip, you can flip it if you, for some reason you don't like it. That's a whole different situation. Yes, and especially for investment. For investment, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. But uh, other than that, we'll always rent first. And we can't tell you what area you got to come to this country. Come to you're home. either doing it on your own, spending three weeks here, or come take one of our world wind. Actually, Seven if it, making the investment to come with us on a tour is the best investment you could possibly do to answer yourself those questions about where in Panama potentially 
you will see more of the country than you could ever see by yourself. And you will have contacts that brother and I we have gathered for all the, these years of experience. So it's actually what you end up paying for the benefits are pennies. It's it's crazy, guys, for our guests. You know, we, we talk about our tours, $24.50 for a single, $3,900 for a couple. The majority of our guests that end up moving here, we can save them more than that. Mm -hmm. Like Oscar, like because of the price that he gets cars for, he could save you a grand or two on a $20,000 car rather than what you're going to find yourself. No, I just, yeah. Save you hundreds and if not thousands on pet relocation, depending how you're going to do it. Yeah. We'll save you money on your phone. We got, so I, I run into people that have been five years that are still paying a $70 a month AT&T plan and they live here permanently because they think they need that to get their text. And that is $800 a year. Mm -hmm. So we can save you way more money. But anyways, I've been sued in a state court for non-payment of credit cards without affecting my visa application. Uh, Panama has no access to your credit report. So no, I have uh, unless you you were criminally charged for uh, that um, and it's on your credit report, they only look at your credit report. Yes, it's legal to bring nutritional supplements. Best practice is always bring them in the bowl. These are natural health products, yes. Mm -hmm. Is personal liability insurance, including umbrella policies. <laughs> you know, Terry, that's the funniest thing. The highest policy you can get for a car, what, 100000 What? The, the highest liability yeah, you can get for your vehicle is 100000 The highest. The highest liability you can get in a home for your personal insurance is $100,000. There's no such thing. And Bella, um, umbrella policies haven't been invented here because there's never been an award over that. So you don't need it. That's why liability insurance on a 10-year-old or older vehicle is $270 a year. Yeah. It's, you know, ridiculously cheap. Okay, there's that medical ailment. I don't know why this one is going around. But besides some type of a communicable disease that the receptionist can see on you, no. Okay, that's a good question. It's SAA direct deposit. Um, the way Social Security direct deposit works is uh, it'll be a one to two days later than your normal Social Security payment. It go, it comes into Panama to like the Panama U.S. Embassy and it gets distributed locally. So there is no fee. It, it's like an AC, it's a local ACH where there's no fee because I could send Oscar one dollar right now. He would receive one dollar. There, there are no fees of local um, transfer. No, very, very good question. Mm -hmm. No U.S. or Canadian bank does retail operations in Panama. And I say it that way because you'll see the Bank of America Tower. You'll see the Citibank Tower. You'll see the Scotiabank Tower downtown in uh, Panama City. But they don't have retail operations. So there is no connection um, whatsoever. You know, I can simply say that. I think we caught up. Yeah, I got two can... people that raised their hand that I moved you to panelists, but you haven't accepted yet. Actually, one that just hasn't. So we'll try it one more time. I think Quinn was already on. I don't know if you raised your hand a second time because it was clear. And we are going to. Now, we talked about a lot. There we go. Quinn is coming on. So we're going to talk to him. I'm just going to. Finish my sentence. We talked a, a lot today. And so I put our contact us form. Please give us a day to get back to you if you fill us in, because usually on these meetings, we get a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, Quinn. How are you? Hi. Um, nice to meet you guys. Thanks for doing this. Um, Where are you calling in from? I, I'm in David right now, and oh, I'm 23. Yeah. I'm not I'm not looking to retire, uh -huh. um, but okay. I, I'm, <laughs> um, I'm here on a Fulbright for the next 10 months and I'm teaching at UTP um, at the language center there. Um, and I've only been here for about a week, but I visited Boquete 
last week and it was so phenomenally beautiful yeah. um and i i just wanted to talk about maybe moving from david to boquete because i have a short term rental here um it was kind of just to figure out what i wanted um but i'm realizing that there's not really a ton of nature in david there's not too much to do unless i want to be shopping all the time um yeah. so kind of just would you guys recommend moving to Boquete even if I work in David and if so how would I go about finding a rental for about nine months um uh, nine months you're in the good clear uh you can have a easy to find now you have to look at the budget it is possible to work in David and live in Boquete especially if you because the buses goes every hour every 30 minutes in the morning um in the last bus from david to boquete you can leave all the way up to like 10, 10 p.m is that yeah. thing is the oh, last wow. bus so in that matter you're great entertaining yourself in boquete as you might experience already and it's tons to do there is a uh, uh live music events there is trails you can go hiking there is a beautiful park so you can go also for walking it's very social uh, mm -hmm. so they the rentals here right now, you, you we are entering into the low season, so chances to find something are higher. But you will pay a little bit more than probably what you would pay in David. So okay. it's different according yeah. to that. Right. If you're living, if you're living in downtown, um, sometimes there are options that you can find for under six hundred dollars. There is mm -hmm. some studios that you can find um, uh, in Alto Boquete for about three hundred dollars. So there is options. Um, the best way is to just spend the time here, come for like at least a day, or if you want to send us an email or something like that, we can connect you for, for some agent. But I'll check out the marketplace on Facebook and put the location Boquete and check out for mm -hmm. rentals. And they usually they can get some good listings in that as well. Yeah, I don't know okay. what your budget's like. I saw something recently i'm just trying to find it now i can't find it for 500 a nice little one bedroom in boquete mm -hmm. but I, I don't know if that's part of your budget or or not but like in that you know you're not going to find a realtor that's going to be in the four to six hundred dollar range like mostly them are you know gringo retired people who have twelve hundred fifteen hundred dollars a month to rent mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there are places i personally live uh, uh did you visit the park in boquete um i visited a place with a lot of flowers that was right next to a river well, i we, don't know yeah we have a 20 acre brand new park you got to check out it's got oh, lakes. wow. Okay. Yeah. I live across the street from it in Boquete, and I pay 600 bucks for a two-bedroom. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so, it, it, so you would recommend... Mm -hmm. Okay. So you would recommend just looking on Facebook Marketplace? Mostly That's one. that. Or, or the Boquete Group. Oh, the Boquete There's, Group as well. Um, expats in Boquete, Boquete Community Group, they all have rental mm -hmm. listings. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even they have, it uh, might be like uh, some... some owners oh, or homeowners yeah. who might have a separate studio that can mm. be also very affordable, you know? Now, I don't know mm. if you join, X, save this link into your okay. notepad or something, join the group, and then you'll see it. This came up. Oh, sorry, this is old. My mistake. But this shows you what you can get. This one was for 450 Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, it should, wow. Thing that somebody commented on it so it kind of shows you what you can get in, in okay it's, it's a small little one bedroom yeah but it's mm -hmm. uh, yeah for for options for you you'll be you'll be good to find it you'll be in all that trouble awesome thank you and just last thing is there potentially a way for me to contact megan because i watched your last video from january and I saw that she was a PCB. I was going to be a PCB, and my younger sister goes to Penn State. Um, uh, so I would, I would really love to talk with her about kind of being a younger woman in Panama and what her experience was. Um, how would I be able to get a hold of her? Um, you can actually send an email. Yeah, send uh, an email to okay. that contact us address. I'll send it right to Megan. Okay. Yeah, no, she will. Okay. She will love to. Uh, and also, like, if, if, you once you have the contact, and you'll reach out to her directly. And she can tell you all about it. She's been here in Boquete for five years now. 
Awesome. Okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for calling us. Yeah. All right. All right. So well, I think we're coming to the end. We are this. the last person. If you come on, thank you very much, Quinn. It was great to have you. This last person, uh, I'm not, I, I can't figure out the name, but I just promoted the other panelists. If you don't come on, we are going to end it. I know it still says we have 31 questions, but I think I answered, we answered them all, Oscar. Yeah, we are answering all. On buying cars. Okay, I, I, I put it in the chat. I'm going to put it in the chat one more time, guys, about cars. You need to fill out expense. This link, ah, I'm sorry, guys. Cinema Expat Service. Go to PanamaExpatService.com. Vehicle purchase. Here is the link about cars if you want to um, do that. So great to see you all tonight. And great to talk with you all tonight. Yeah, thank you all for your time, for the interest in... Uh... Oh, last minute question. Yes, you to qualify as a married couple, you must be married. Common law is not accepted in Panama. And feel free to get married here. It's really cheap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very yeah otherwise, you both would need a friendly nations visa. Mm -hmm. But to come as a couple, same as the pension at all. You'd, you'd, if you're not married, you got to do two complete um, full price. Most lawyers will give you a discount to the American couple mm -hmm. because they're meeting with you at the same time. Right on, guys. See ya. Have a good night, everybody.